Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make animations with matplotlib. The animation you're seeing right now is the example I prepared for today. So let's see how that works. So here's the script. We need numpy, we need matplotlib of course, and specifically we need from matplotlib.animation func animation. And this is the, um, f the, the object that takes care of uh, generating the animation itself. Now NumPy is used to generate the data and here we have X and Y and this is just the sine wave we just saw and uh, nothing special there. But we have to then create also a figure and this figure is the figure we will later um, where the animation will happen and we create an axis in this figure. And then we have data skip which we'll talk a little bit more about later. This essentially is the um, amount of data points that are skipped between frames, more on that later. Then we have two very important functions. First, init func, second, update plot. Both of these functions are passed together with the figure to the func animation object. The init func is called at the beginning of the animation and whenever the animation repeats. So between repeats, when the animation is finished and it starts again, init fun will be called to reinitialize the animation to its initial state. Update plot is where the animation itself happens. So update plot is called repeatedly by the funk animation object. And each call to update plot generates the next frame of the animation. Frames then defines what is passed to the up, update plot function. You see update plot takes one parameter, which is i. When the animation starts, we start at this sequence. And be, because of the way I define the sequence, we start at zero. So at the first uh, frame, uh, initially, of course, init func is called. So we clear the axis of everything that was already plotted and we label the axis with uh, yeah, whatever we want, we want there. And then we go to update plot. And update plot first is zero. So i equals zero. And then data skip gives how much of the data, how many indices I want plotted between frames. So at the first frame, we get zero to 50, zero to 50 on X and Y plotted in black. And then we also call scatter, which creates these red, these red dots that we see at each um, point I. So this actually allows us in the animation to follow um, which parameter uh, was actually passed to update plot to generate that frame. Then of course, the next data point is um, we have data skip, which is 50. So initially we have zero, then we skip to 50. So then we have i equals 50. So we plot 50 to 50 plus 50. So 50 to 100, 50 to 100. So this gives us the next part of the animation. There's one small, not error, but inconvenience here. And this is that uh, in this version of the script, I set X limit and Y limit whenever I update the plot, which is not visible because, it, because it's always set to the same X limit and Y limit. So the range of X and Y axis is always the same, but we could uh, technically set this also in the init function. So move it there and nothing would change. It would just be a little bit more efficient because plt.xlim and plt.ylim would be called only upon initialization of the animation and not every time we need to update the plot. Now there's one more parameter of funk animation that we didn't talk about and that's interval. An interval is in milliseconds and it tells us how much time passes between frames. 
but really it tells us the minimum time that uh, should pass between frames because if updating the plot takes longer than this for whatever reason and this this can happen if you have a very complex thing that you're doing in your update plot function then it will actually be longer but it will never it will not be shorter than 20 milliseconds just so it's it's a bit more visually consistent so this funk animation generates a live animation within the Python console within matplotlib. But most of the time when we make animations, we want to actually save them somewhere. And for this, we can simply call the anim.save function, which I didn't do initially because I didn't want, want to save it. With this function, we can um, need to define a writer, which is just a codec. And if you uh, ever have problems there, uh, if it ever gives you an error where it says ffmpeg not found, then you'll need to figure out how to install it. And this these days got a lot easier because I actually was able to install it with Conda. And when the animation is saved, of course, then it is it doesn't have to be updated in real time anymore. And then a lot of the um, speed ups and slowdowns that happen during the live animation uh, go away. So here we can define the DPI, which is of course the pixel resolution, and then frames per second, which is the yeah frames per second, so the speed of the animation. So let's try that really quickly. So I can show you how it looks live and when it is saved. This can take a moment. So now it is done saving and the animation is now uh, running live. But let me quickly show you how it looks uh, in its saved form. So here is the same animation as an MP4 file. It of course doesn't repeat because uh, MP4s don't usually repeat. If you would save it as a GIF, it would repeat. But we click plus and it, um, the animation goes much more smoothly than the, um, than the live one, which slows down a bit at the end which is for performance reasons. But here, the frame rate is set to 30 frames per second, so it looks a lot more smooth. Now, this is just the framework, of course. You can plot anything, any kind of data you have um, that's plottable, you can also animate, just with the same procedure as I just showed you. And to illustrate this, I'll quickly um, show you that this also scales to more than one plot, so here, I have two subplots, I have the sine and the cosine, and I will quickly run this to show you how it looks. So here we have one figure, but two different plots. And this is nice because then um, having them in the same figure with the same update plot rendered means that they are on the same clock, so to speak. So the um, they will be aligned in time. There is no jitter between them. So this is how you, we make animations in matplotlib and I hope this video helped you and I hope you'll be able to make some cool animations from your data. See you in the next one.